Good morning. It's raining. I think we've had over a half inch so far, so that will delay the start of planting for a few days. Oh, I was sitting in the office some time this morning because it's raining and I haven't had time to sit down and, you know, read my farmer gossip on the internet. Truck showed up here. I said, no, you're in the wrong spot. So he has backed all the way down the road to my place and we got to go unload a truck. I think he's probably only got a pallet or two, but I really have no idea at this point. There was one guy that called me yesterday, said he'd be coming late this afternoon, so I'm expecting that one. One showed up yesterday that I thought was the one that was supposed to be here this morning. I don't know. We'll go unload it. Well, not a lot on that one, but uh, stuff we need, I guess. I don't know. The bottom pallet there came with almost as many pallets as bags. We got we got three pallets and five bags of seed. And then the top one came with almost as many pieces of cardboard as it did bags of seed because there are um, 13 bags on there and six different units bunch of one baggers i think uh the guy that i'm warehousing for i think he has been getting some trial seed out to some guys guys that he's talked into planting one or two bags to try stuff for the year trying to set up sales for next year kind of thing so i'm pretty sure that's what most of that is and i don't have to deliver those i mean i can if i'm going by somewhere but he is gonna be um um, back, I guess, next week. I don't know if I even told you guys this, but his wife had a baby like a month ago, and so he's been on paternity leave, and uh, this is his last week with that, so he'll be back um, and able to deliver some of those small ones that get two or three bags or six bags or stuff like that. We are probably going to come down here and treat some beans later today, uh, maybe even this morning yet. We've got more to do for my stuff. Um, training, can't do much else. But right now I'm going back to the office. I didn't get my breakfast yet. Working on some uh, data stuff. Uh, I have a couple of boundaries that I mapped on the G5 display when I had it in the Gator before we planted those beans. I had offloaded that data onto a jump drive somewhere. I can't find my jump drive, so I'm going to come out here and do it again. And we're gonna see if our auto track activation is there yet. Like I said, we might have to take it outside so we can get um, a good view of the sky uh, or cell reception. I don't know, we'll see what we can find here. Exporting, exporting. That's an awesome display, you know what? It's gonna be really nice when we get it working, right? Man, oh man, am I feeling lazy today. We aren't getting much done. Uh, I got that uh, dead off the display though. For some reason, so so John Deere has this op center, right? And that's where they manage all their data. And it's super easy to get stuff in there when you have a MTG and everything's hooked up and working correctly. I didn't have that in this case, so I have to transfer it via U USB stick. Fine. Um, they have a program called John Deere Data Manager to facilitate getting that data from the USB stick to your account on my John Deere. I can't get it to work on my computer. Neither of the computers in the office will allow me to use uh, John Deere Data Manager. It won't open. Well, and once it does open and click sign in and nothing ever happens, it doesn't let me sign into my account. I don't understand it. I don't know. But my wife's computer at home works. So I'm going there to get this data uploaded because I need the boundaries off of it so I can finish making my prescription maps. I've got two fields with no boundaries or the wrong boundaries um, <coughs> and I don't want to make the scripts with the wrong boundary. I would rather correct it so I need those up there. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We might not get to treating beans today because I'm being lazy. So um, after I get done with this, we're gonna we're actually gonna run to the John Deere dealer because I need one more of my um, um, fittings to change the fertilizer tubes that I was working on the other day. I was one short. They have one. I'm gonna go and get it, and we're gonna work on the planter this afternoon. Might need a combine. Small eight R. 
Now, we got our stuff that we needed. Also got a bunch of field cultivator sweeps. I probably, I probably should have done that earlier in the year when they had a sale on them and I missed and they didn't call me to tell me, so. Oh well, there's a couple planters. Somebody needs a planter. But we got 150 field cultivator sweeps in the back. Yeah. Okay, we got all of those unloaded. Phil was uh, cleaning the back of the porch of the office there. That's where we keep those field cultivator sweeps. And yeah, anyway, we got them unloaded. And uh, see, truck number two is here for the day. No idea how much is on here, but we need it. We need it now, so glad he's here. We'll get him unloaded, and then uh, we're going to go down and work in the shop, clean up some stuff a little bit. Um, actually, we've got see those three boxes stacked up right there. Those need to go to the farm. So we're probably going to throw them on a trailer and take them down while we're going. Beans on this truck, which I needed also. They're not for my warehousing stuff, so, you know, there's that, but they were needed. I brought those three boxes down here. Um, I'm about over the embarrassment of this, so we'll talk about it a little bit more. But when I was bringing some corn down here over a month ago now, uh, we had a little accident and a couple of my boxes three slid off my trailer and it was not good this is the corn that we cleaned up and as you can see it's dirty we've got to clean it we got some leaves and sticks and such in it most of it now this box is relatively full that box doesn't have that much in it this box doesn't have that much in it less than half it is what it is um we gotta clean it Dad made me a cleaner, <laughs> so we're going to we'll see how it goes here. Before we get to that, though, we are about done with our corn planter here, and so we need to um, we need to get it out of here, or at least get it hooked up to the tractor and move. Now, we are close enough to spring. We're going to go ahead and put our seed plates in. Uh, those are bean plates. Right there's our corn plates. All right, so what we're doing here is we've got to tighten our brush belts. You want to, don't want to store it with tension on them, so we always take it off after we're done planting, and then usually the day we're going to the field, I go through and tighten them. But we're into the middle of April now. We're close enough. This will be one less thing that I'll have to do day of. So in order to do that, we've got to pull the meters off, and then there's a knob right here. And we got to turn it, and it's actually sort of difficult to do. I haven't had to pull the brush belts out on any of them yet, but... Oh, yeah, there. So that locks tension on this brush belt. Uh, and then we set our meter back in place. Put the little thing down in there. Okay. Latch it down. Put the seed delivery tube back on. And we can open this up. And I've noticed that sometimes... Some of those bristles get caught right there. So if I just rotate this a little bit, it kind of keeps them from getting deformed. All right, and then we come over here and we get our seed plate. This is row number nine. Number nine, they all have to match the, well, I'm always back in the same row. So before we put that in, we're checking our double eliminator, that piece there to make sure it's on the middle lines, which it is. Put that in, tighten it down. Can I do that with one hand? If I can hold it, there we go. And then we close our lid. And put the hose back on. That's nine. Keep going. In my effort to keep procrastinating and not trading seed today, because I'm tired and don't want to do it. Uh, I've been working on a computer some more. We've got our scripts all made up, right, for um, seating rates and everything. Um, next step to that is making work plans. Uh, this is something that John Deere lets us do, and then I can send the file straight to the machine. So when I pull into a field, it already has the script loaded and knows what variety I'm trying to plant, or at least I'm planning on planting there. Uh, and it makes setup a lot easier once we get in the field. So I'm filling those out. So I'll walk you through on our next field here is this 8-1. We'll hit next. Field looks like that. Uh, over here, 
We are going to select a crop. It is going to be soybeans. And then we are going to select a variety. These are 3442s. And then right here we should have a prescription that Brock made. Looks like that. That's not a very good script, Brock. What happened? We got blank spots. This is the second one I've had that's got that, so I'm going to go in and fix it before we keep going here. All right, so I went in and made a new script, and I don't know what happened here, but this is the one that we had. Nope, that's the one that we've got. <clears throat> this is the one that I just made. They are not the same. I don't know why. But this is the one we're going with. They're not even close to the same. I mean, this, these lines are in the same spot. Must have got the numbers wrong. And we filled in the edges. So anyway, this is the one we're going with. Um, so we've got that variety in there and that script selected. We don't need any product or mixes because we're not putting any starter or anything like that on. Uh, we select our guidance lines and I'm just checking all of them. <clears throat> and then we come in here, tell what machine we're going to use. This will be the AR. Uh, implement will be a planter, 1790. And then the operator should be Bill. And then we hit save. So now I can send that file directly to the uh, the tractor via my John Deere or uh, uh, the, the MTG, the uh, wireless data transfer stuff there. And it'll be there. And now I'm tired of working on that. Uh, I got maybe half the bean fields done. We got quite a bit of it. So um, let's hook up our planter. Let's, let's, we're done with this in here. There's a tractor right on the other side of this wall. Phil said something about getting his truck in here to change oil. So let's create a little room in the shop by hooking up this tractor to it. I haven't really run this much since we changed oil and stuff on it. Could use a little. Could use a little. Let's put a gallon in. Or let's put a half a gallon in. Too far away for the pump. Have to use a can. Well, got her oil in, went to start it, and uh, par for the course, she's dead. So we got our jump pack. We'll hook it up and see if that'll start it. Otherwise, well, the charger was right there. It's around here somewhere. Ah, gonna do it. Ooh, close. Try one more time. Nope, we killed it. All right, well, we got it. We appear to have a software update. I don't really want to install this right now. Can I hit cancel? We'll do it, but not right now. Because I need to be able to get to my screen to do the fold functions on the planner and such. So, first thing we gotta do is back up and get hooked up. Okay, got it hooked. Hydraulics. Oh, we got. Ah, oh, I should unhook it. So I'll plug the wires in, or un, uh, uh, not unhook it. Turn it off. But then I'll have to jump it again. We can do the hydraulics anyway. Case drain, and then they're all color coordinated. We got these super nice aluminum color coded ends here that match all the covers on the outlets. Power beyond makes it nice. All right, well, it's been running for a few minutes. I got all the hydraulics hooked up, except for this pressure line for the Power Beyond. That one I could not get to go in there under pressure. So maybe now that it's off. There we go. All right, so let's go over hydraulics here real quick. Yellow one down here, this is a case drain. That is low pressure return for hydraulic motors 
just in case there's any back pressure on the vac motors the ccs fan it has somewhere for that oil to go rather than blow the seals out this one is important uh, then we have our power beyond pressure and return line power beyond runs our hydraulic downforce it runs our uh, wing weight transfer system it runs does that run the power generation for the um uh, the hydraulic compressor or uh, uh, generator for the electric drive it runs the exact rate fertilizer pump i'm pretty sure all of that stuff okay number one is our frame control that controls our fold functions and our raise and lower number two i believe is for the um surefire pump system the two by two by two fertilizer system that runs that pump Three is a vac fan on the left side. Four is vac fan on the right side. And then over here we have a load sense line that works with the power beyond. It kind of senses how much load is on it so that it can, I don't know exactly. I think it controls how much oil goes to it, but uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. So that's the hydraulic system. We've got a, three wires going up into the cab. Two of those are for camera. One of them is power for our 360 um, rain antennas, GPS antennas. We may have to look at our routing and lengthen those a little bit. Um, we've got seven pin implement power connector that provides power and lights. And then this one is the one that I don't ever plug in with the tractor running. This is the ISO bus connector for basically everything else. The seed monitors, the uh, <coughs> GPS stuff, the the, the precision ag components there so um do i need this one i think i do i think i do i think it is for uh sex switch the foot switch to control the two by two fertilizer on and off should be should be a connector for it somewhere if i need it i think or or there's the distinct possibility that there's a wire harness that i took out of here because i didn't need it and i have to put it back in Got a foot switch. Let's see if that's plugged into anything. There's a wire harness that connects that foot switch down there to the implement to a power source. And I don't know if I have it in here. Oh, good. Started back up. All right. Let's see if our monitor pulls up and we can get this thing folded and pull it out of here. We might have to go outside and unfold and reface and set everything up and down a couple of times, but it is raining, so I don't really want to leave it outside or be out there very long. Well, we got folded up. We're still way out of phase. I mean, our wing wheels are all in different positions. Um, but enough that we can pull it out of here. We'll watch our antenna. I think we're good, but that 360 antenna sticks right up there, doesn't it? Yeah, we got plenty of room. We're gonna go outside and find a big open spot in the driveway or the yard and unfold it, set it down, raise it, lower it, fold it back up, and we'll back her back in here. These wires are definitely too tight. We're gonna have to undo some zip ties here. And let them bridge this gap straight or something. I don't know, but we gotta get more slack there somehow. Um, we got some cylinder stops in I gotta pull out so we can set the whole thing down, rephase. Re We're gonna get it all dirty in this driveway, but what are you gonna do? That's all right. Better. All right, we got all we needed to done here. So we'll put her back in the barn. Okay. Well, it's more out of the way than it was. We're gonna let the DEF pump clean itself out and then we'll hit the disconnect and maybe it'll start next time. I did not have it disconnected when I was sitting here with the planter in the shop, so, oh well. Okay, cool. Okay, it's time to clean some corn. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I said to Dad, hey, can you build me a frame to hold a screen that I can put over a box? And he, um, he came up with this contraption, and it's way more impressive than I, than I, than I was anticipating. So we've got, we've got a screen down there. That's our, our last line of defense, I guess. We've got an air box with a, a blower that's blowing the air up with a, a deflector. And then we needed a screen for the fines, so he found this and built a frame to hold that on an angle. And then we've got a primary screen up top here. 
that um yeah and then the the top to hold the airflow so that it, it impressive he even put a, a a vibrate sander on there to make everything shake we found that that's a little aggressive it makes the kernels go flying so uh, we don't really need that but watch <laughs> so we've got our box hanging up here and we're just going to open it just a little bit we got the air turned on it coming down and this one the seed size is a little smaller we're gonna get more kernels falling through that's okay we'll clean them up we're still getting most of it turn the light on there we go so this box here was one that i had uh, held up and on a windy day and kind of let the wind blow a lot so i think it's a little cleaner than the one we already did we got a lot of dirt out of that last one like fine dirt uh, this is this is so far a lot cleaner, but yeah, all that came out of the one box. This is way cleaner. Yeah. Oh, it's too many sticks. Some of them, sometimes the sticks work their way through, but we're trying to keep them out and catch them as you can. Like there's one bumping around over here. Yeah, this is not too big Yeah, this variety's a lot smaller, flat. They fit through that small screen better. I mean, that's not a lot, it's fine. Uh, you see in there? These came out of uh, this box, this 06A27. They are F2s, 1816 feet per pound. The other box that we did was uh, one of these boxes. That one up there, I think. They should all be the same. They're R3s round at 1364 feet per pound, a much bigger seed. The other box is mostly that one. R2s, 1670, but they're round, so they shouldn't fit through the screen very much either. There's some bark. My bottom box is getting full or it's getting a pile, so we need to uh, level it off or clean it up a little bit. So we're going to rake some of this stuff off of here. Leave our fan on so it blows some fines out stuff off to the side so we can look in there. Oh, look at that. That is not from the, the spill. That's seed treatment chunk from the factory. Uh-huh. No good. Quality control. I don't let that happen in the stuff I treat. At least I try really hard not to. Yeah, this stuff is not near as dirty as the first box was. That was way worse. Alright, well, we'll clean this up. Well, there's what we got. Final product. This is much cleaner than the first one we did. There's no stones in it, which this was mostly in the grass, so that makes more sense. But I don't know. I thought we might run it through a second time, but I'm not so sure. Anyway, we still got a little bit in the box. A few pieces of grass got through. I'm just going to push this off to the side, pick through it a little bit, and then we should have enough room to finish it. base goes on and then the screen with the air and then we need this piece it's kind of like that and then this one Positions this. Okay. And then this one goes on top. Look. 
like so. I don't need our air hose. Ah! We'll put our box back over it. That's awesome. Way to go, Dad. That's some farmer ingenuity right there. Okay, I feel really good about this box. Like, it may not be 100% perfect, but <clears throat> that will plant. No problem whatsoever. So we're going to go ahead and dump it back in the box that we took it out of and make sure we got our label on there. We do. 06A down there on the bottom. Check this out. Make sure it's clean. Yeah, it's clean. Uh, and then that one will be done. And then we've got this one. And this one is full and dirty. We're not doing that one tonight. And we may run this one again. It's not bad but we may do it again.